So today's lesson is 2.3 piecewise functions found on pages 67 to 73 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of functions, including algebraic functions, polynomial rational and power, transcendental functions, which are exponential logarithmic and trigonometric, piecewise functions, including absolute value. Uh, lesson objectives. One, to learn what a piecewise or a split function actually is. Number two, to learn how to write a piecewise function. And number three, to learn how piecewise functions are used in real life. And number four, to learn what a step function is. So a piecewise function is basically a function that is comprised of, of pieces of other functions. For example, we're gonna graph the following piecewise function. So this is g of x, there should be an equal sign in here. So g of x is equal to negative one, and that's when x is in between negative infinity and negative three. G of x is equal to 2x plus 4, and that's when x is between negative 3 and 1, not including 1. And g of x is equal to negative x minus 1 squared plus 7, and that's when x is between 1 and infinity. So if we're going to graph this thing, we just have to do it piece by piece. So we're saying that g of x, which is the height of the graph, is negative 1, and that's from negative infinity to negative 3. So everything from negative infinity to negative 3, that has a height of negative 1. Now, Negative three is an open bracket, so I should have put an open circle here. So it looks like a horizontal line from negative infinity to negative three. Now, from um, negative three to positive one, it looks like two x plus four. So really all you need to do to figure out what this sort of uh, thing looks like, we know it's gonna be a line. Well, we can just plug in our x value of negative three, and then we can plug in x value of one and just connect the dots with a straight line. So if we plug in a negative 3, we get negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So at negative 3, it has a height of negative 2. And that is a solid dot, because we have the square bracket. And if we plug in a 1, we get 2 times 1 plus 4, which is uh, 2 plus 4, which is 6. So when x equals 1, it's at a height of 6, so somewhere up here. And we know that's an angled line, because it has a slope of 2 and y intercept of 4. So with the ruler, you would connect the dots. Probably a lot better than that. And finally, um, from one to infinity, we know it looks like a parabola that opens downward. So all we need to do is plug in a one. If we plug in a positive one, we get a value of one minus one, which is zero. Uh, squared and then add a negative to it, it's still zero. And that is comma seven, so that is up here. So at one comma seven up there, and we know it opens downward, so we could plug in other values if you want. Maybe we'll plug in a three. If we plug in a three, we get three minus one, which is two. Two squared is four. Negative four plus seven is three. So three comma three is another point on this parabola. And we know it's opening downwards, so we can just continue to sketch it, something like that. So it's a piecewise function, because there's three different pieces to it. and here's your domain for each of the pieces okay so you have to really take a good look at um, what it tells you the, what the x values are sorry for each piece of this function and that'll help you graph it and also knowing what the look of all these functions is like horizontal lines compared to oblique lines compared to um, parabolas or root functions or log functions you need to know all that stuff so you can draw little sketches of these piecewise functions so example Postal rates change according to the weight, which we're going to call x, of the oversized letter that you are attempting to mail. If the cost c of x is described by the function below, we're going to a find the cost to mail a letter that is 163 grams, 48 grams, and 480 grams, and b we're going to draw a graph of the function. So here's our function, our c of x function. It says it costs a dollar if your overweight um, package is anywhere between 0 and 100 grams. It costs $1.70 if it's between 100 and 200 grams, and it costs $2.45 it's between 200 and 500 grams. So we can actually answer part A quite easily just by looking at which range of values each of these numbers falls into. So if it's 163 grams, that means that it's going to cost $1.70 because it's part of this realm. 48 grams means it's going to cost $1.00. And 480 grams means it's going to cost 245. So if we're to graph this thing, we're going to have x over here. We're going to have c of x over there. We know that at a certain um, value from 0 to 100, it's only a dollar's worth. So it doesn't matter. Um, 0, non-inclusive, because you're not going to get charged for a letter that has no mass, because that means that letter does not exist. 
Um, so from zero to a hundred, it is going to cost a dollar. Now from a hundred to two hundred, it's going to cost a dollar seventy. So that might be somewhere up here. Um, now notice that the hundred is included in the first part, so it can't be included in the second part. So it'll look something like this. And then it's going to be 245 somewhere up here if you're going between 200 and 500. So, so 500 would be somewhere over there if we're trying to keep the same scale. And it'll look something like that. So this is what we call uh, a step function. And so it's a piecewise function because there's different pieces, but it's also considered a step function um, because there are definite little steps that uh, take place in this real life situation. So in summary, a piecewise function is a function that is made of pieces of other functions. And when graphing a piecewise function, be sure to find your two endpoints and then use your knowledge of the various functions to sketch the graph. A step function is a special type of piecewise function in which when graphed, it looks like a series of steps or stairs. And there are many examples of piecewise functions in real life. So your assignment is on pages 70 to 72. Uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.